welcome to the Galapagos. We love it here. There's lots of different species around the place. Although, we're definitely the cutest. Start the movie already! Okay. Situated in the equatorial eastern Pacific Ocean, the Galapagos is a unique volcanic archipelago of basalt islands encompassing an astonishing degree of both terrestrial and marine biodiversity. Surprisingly, the marine ecology here is largely temperate due to the area's unusual bathymetry and both the Humboldt and Cromwell deepwater currents. This creates strong upwelling of cool nutrient-rich water and a highly diverse ecosystem. Together, this creates both bottom-up processes, whereby productivity regulates community biomass, and top-down processes, whereby predation regulates biomass. Particular organisms are known to attribute to both these processes, particularly within subtitle assemblages. Unlike a typical tropical setting where corals flourish, here the habitat formers build the subtitle structures and hence the assemblages are algae and invertebrates. On sloping rocky reefs, macroalgae are dominant. However, on a vertical wall such as Kicker Rock, this shifts to encrusting invertebrates such as sea fans, sponges, ascidians, hydroids and barnacles. Habitat determiners then influence the structure and have the direct ability to completely alter it if highly abundant. Organisms in this role include marine iguanas, green turtles, herbivorous fish and the ever so hungry urchins. Although small, these spiny critters have the capacity to transform kelp beds into barren rock. Habitat responders are those who just exist within the habitat without instigating change. This encompasses those such as sea cucumbers, sharks, sea lions and fish. However, many of these organisms constitute significant fisheries within the region and thus they have an indirect potential to alter the subtidal assemblage. Although there's no commercial fisheries within the Galapagos Marine Reserve, artisanal fishing is carried out for more than 70 species of fish and invertebrates. This includes the Galapagos grouper, bacalao, mackerel, wrasse, lobster, and the poaching of sea cucumbers, despite them being declared effectively extinct. There is also tuna and shark fisheries concentrated at the reserve border. Many of these organisms are apex predators, significant to the structure of the subtidal assemblages. Overfishing of lobsters and fish has been correlated with urchin explosions and reduced algae cover, which can lead to fundamental changes and reduce productivity in the whole community. What makes this marine ecosystem so interesting is that it is controlled by both bottom-up and top-down processes. This means that not only does upwelling influence the abundance of habitat formers such as algae and invertebrates, which then in turn controls habitat determiners such as urchins and herbivorous fish, but also the abundance of habitat responders such as groupers and sharks, and thus predation. Furthermore, bottom-up processes are impacted by climatic events such as El Nino, whilst top-down processes are impacted by overfishing. Changes to either processes can cause a domino effect within the food chain and seriously alter the delicate dynamics of these subtidal ecosystems.